Welcome back to another episode of Malvo Talks. This is going to be the first episode to kick off my special series for Black History Month. But anyway, this first episode is going to be titled The Unique Education of Malcolm X. And this episode mainly comes from the series of interviews, that is to say, the material for this uh, episode comes from the series of interviews that the late, great Gil Noble did with many of the uh, surviving siblings of Malcolm X, and particularly uh, Malcolm X's older brother, Wilfred. And you see, because Malcolm X's father, Earl Little Sr., was uh, married twice and had two different families. The first family where Malcolm's older half-sister Ella Collins came from, and she's going to figure uh, in this uh, episode later on. And the family from his second wife, uh, who came from uh, Louise Norton. Now, this is Malcolm's mother. And Wilfred, Hilda, and Philbert, and the younger siblings of Malcolm X, uh, coming from that uh, family. But there were three half-brothers uh, and sisters, uh, and then the full blooded uh, siblings of Malcolm X, but they all had a role in his formation, his educational formation, but in particularly in terms of his mother's curriculum. And that's what I really want to get at. Because when they were moving from place to place to place in his early life, and going from Omaha to Wisconsin, and then winding up in Lansing, Michigan. His mother, Louise, had a, a very rigorous program of education. And if you all uh, are familiar with uh, Manning Marable's new biography of uh, Malcolm X, uh, which was award-winning, you will see that the activities that both the father and the mother had in the UNIA Association, the United uh, Negro Improvement Association, founded by Ma Marcus Garvey, never tapered off in terms of how the children were raised. And Louise Little used to have to do her work because she was the secretary for the chapter that Earl Little, Earl Little supervised and uh, tried to set up in these various places that he lived. She used to have to do the housework and the children were there and so while she was doing the housework, she often had the children, Malcolm included, read various articles and periodicals uh, talking about not only the work of the UNIA, but also of various things going on in terms of Black America then. And as she was doing the ironing, and this is what Wilfred told Gil Noble, as she was doing the ironing or putting the greens on the stove and whatever it was, washing the clothes, mopping the floor, she used to have the children read to her. And she had a very fascinating and very interesting way of correcting the children because as Wilfred remembered, one of the luxuries of the little household was 
the purchase of an Oxford English Dictionary, which in those days, and still, is just as big as the King James Version of the Bible, or the, if you're Catholic, the Douay Reims Version of the Bible. And it used to sit unfurled uh, on the dining room table that they used to have. And he could remember it vividly. And when they would read the articles, either in various periodicals or pamphlets, and they would hit a word that they didn't understand, they would go to that dictionary and re find the mother would say, go to the dictionary, go to the Oxford English Dictionary, find the word, and then tell me its meaning. So if they ever hit a word, and she could see that they were having trouble, she would go to the dictionary and tell me what that word means. And because Malcolm's mother used to speak French, sometimes she would send away for Le Monde, the newspaper that is uh, very prevalent and still operational in France, particularly it was Parisian oriented, and she would have the children see how far they could get in French because as they read it, they may not have understood what they were reading, but she understood what they were reading. And so they were on their way to being able to read and study French, but she would start them off very young. Of course, uh, Earl Little would sometimes be put off uh, by his wife's superior education. And as is said in the autobiography of Malcolm X, she would, he would uh, stop her ears together because he would take her condescension as a uh, belittling form of being snotty skill set that his mother instilled within him and put him on to. When L. Collins, his half-sister, got him transferred to the Norfolk prison facility. And that had a great library that he was able to, it's able to take advantage of. And that's where, in the autobiography, he credits the... Uh, compulsion to be a voracious reader, institutions and other cultural um, literature that came her way. So she had to know where all these things, uh, what, what, what were the things going on in the world, and particularly uh, concerning the African in the diaspora, and in terms of Le Monde, what was going on in Europe. So she brought her children into that. And that is a lesson for all of us today, that we have got to bring our children in, in terms of the uh, work that we do, and the way in which we want to develop their minds in ways that, quite frankly, the mainstream education system does not do.